Welcome to our lecture line. In response to the request of some of our viewers, we decided to put a few more extra videos on conduction, heat conduction, and we'll get into a little bit more detail here as well. So starting out with a very simple example again, we have two, uh, we have a heat source at 100 degrees centigrade and a heat sink at zero degrees centigrade with a connecting bar between the two that has a cross-sectional area of 10 square centimeters. We're going to do this problem twice. The first time we're going to assume that the bar is made out of copper. The second time we're going to assume that the bar is made out of aluminum. And there we have the heat conductivity constant for both materials. Here's the equation for, that we need in order to calculate the amount of heat transferring per unit time. That's the power or the dQ dt, the amount of heat per unit time being transferred across the bar. Again, assuming also that the bar is a, a length of 1.2 meters. What we need is we need the heat conductivity, we need the cross-sectional area, we need the difference in the temperature, and we need the length. So let's plug in the values and see what we get. Starting with copper, so we'll do this first, starting with copper. This is therefore equal to 385 watts per meter times uh, Kelvin, or per meter per Kelvin, I should say. The cross-sectional area is 10 centimeters squared converted to meters squared. It's 0 0.001 meters squared. Then we have the difference in temperature, which is 100 centigrade degrees. And we divide that by the length, which is 1.2 meters. Now notice that we have Kelvin here, we have centigrade degrees, they're the same size, so we can cancel one by the other. We have meters squared, we have meters and meters, so the meter cancels, so we end up with simply watts as the units, which is the number of joules per second, which is what we're looking for. Now with the calculator, we get 385 times 0 0.001 times 100 divided by 1.2, Oh, let's try it again. 385 uh, times 0.1 divided by 1.2 equals, there you go, 32.08. Well, we'll just call it 32 watts or joules per second. Now, let's do this again, but this time we're going to use aluminum. Notice that the conductivity constant is less and therefore less heat will be transferring across and it'll be proportional to the heat conductivity constant. So for aluminum, we're going to use 205 watts per meter per Kelvin. Everything else stays the same. So we uh, multiply that times, divide by 385, and multiply that times 205, and now we get 17.08, so simply call it 17 watts and we'll round it off to the nearest one watt to make it easier to work with. So here we have a simple example where we have heat conducted across an object. So that's why we have to have a conducting path and therefore it's called heat transfer through conduction. Now what we're going to do in the future videos after this is we're going to do some combinations. We're going to have multiple bars. We're going to have one bar but with different metals of different length and see in each case how we can calculate the power transferred or the heat transferred across the conducting path. And that's how it's done.